Welcome, guys, to Future Prospect Skype. I am so excited about today's show because we're bringing you a story from Michigan, United States, about a phenomenal family called the Gornos. That's their last name, the Gorno family. And I discovered them on Facebook. And I'm going to have you listen to their story and the amazing things they're doing on the other side and doing some positivity through this pandemic. So no further ado, I'm going to give it over to the Gorno family. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Hi sweetheart. Hi. Steve, put your hands up, honey. Honey, Steve, Michael. Hi. And Peggy. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Am I screaming? Thanks for having us. You're welcome, honey. Am I screaming? No. No. No? Okay, because I'm excited. My old house here, it sounds like, oh. But anyway, <laughs> so welcome to Future Prospects, guys. I know about you. I'm beginning to know about you and fell in love with you through the great things that you're doing in Michigan. And I want you to share with our Canadian viewers who you are, a little bit through your stories, and uh, just educate them who you're, who you are. So, Steve, I'll have you start. All right. My name is Steve Gorno, and uh, I've been a tennis coach at Hope College for 23 years. I'm a quality manager at an automotive manufacturer. I've been there almost 30 years. Um, and I, my passions are just coaching my son and watching him grow into, into a little man and, and really become the kind of person that uh, we were always hoping he was going to be. Awesome, honey. That's beautiful. So, Michael. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. So, I want you to introduce yourself to the viewers, um, your age, all the things that you love to do, and just tell them all about uh, Michael. Hi. Uh, so, I'm Michael Gornell, and I'm 11, and I really like to play a lot of sports, and I like to draw a lot. Awesome, honey. Okay, sweetheart. Hey, Peggy. <laughs> All right, sweetheart. Introduce yourself, my love. Um, I'm Peggy, and I have the awesome honor of being Michael's mom and Steve's wife, and I currently work at Hope College in Holland, Michigan. Um, I'm a two-time cancer survivor, and super happy to be with you today. Just This is such an honor. Thank you. Oh, my God. You're such an honor. Now... There's a story behind you, and thank you for introducing yourself. There's a story behind you guys, more. But how I found you was the artwork that you did, and the viewers won't be able to see it until we break away. But I want you to share with us how, in a way, you came up with the first artwork, which they're going to see at the break. So we're going to start with the heart. Explain to us, even though they can't see it, how is it that you came up with this message throughout this whole pandemic? Well, we were just, we were trying to figure out what we could do. We have um, family members who are uh, nurses. We know we have friends who are medical providers, doctors. And we were just trying to figure out what we could do stuck in our home to to get a message to those people and let them know how much we appreciated it. And as we were talking, we've had a lot of sidewalk chalk and we just said, what if we do a design on the driveway and that way people can come by and they can see it and know how much we appreciate those people. And so, so we did one afternoon, we just went out on the weekend and, and started taping off with duct tape and doing the design and coloring it up and, and it became that that first heart artwork that we just wanted to let people know all those critical frontline workers and especially the medical workers and truck drivers and delivery drivers that were keeping us safe. We just wanted to know how much we loved them and how much we appreciated them. All right, sweetheart. Michael, how long did it take for you? Like, what was your part in the artwork, Hanson? What was your part? Um, so I would color, color in all the drawings with my mom, and then I think we, and then we would all um, rip the tape off, and so that was just, so ripping the tape off was kind of like, we did it, it was kind of a we did it moment. Okay, so what you're telling me is that when you went into the driveway, you had to 
actually design it out with tape? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then fill in the colors. Yeah. Holy big, cow. So, Peggy, what was your part? Sorry, Steve? The big heart. If, to do that stained glass design, we had to tape it off and do different sections. So that's how we, it was created. Awesome. So, Peggy, what was your role in that, sweetheart? Bringing out the desserts or bringing out the treats and the beverages or... kind of talk about what you do in our situation, right? Like, um, I was on Facebook and actually walking the neighborhood and we saw some chalk art and some stained glass. And um, so when we were talking with Michael about it, that's kind of how it, it came out was we're like, well, you can always do something. You can always thank people. You can always do something to make a difference. And so I'm part of the, I'm part of the design team. I'm not, um, very artistic. Peggy is um. <laughs> the inspiration behind every message. Her whole life has been about appreciating other people and recognizing them publicly and vocally. So she was the inspiration behind all of it. She was yeah. the captain. Share what the inspirational side of yourself, Peggy. I'm going to get Michael in here, but when the people, when the viewers see the work, they'll understand. It's a beautiful artwork, and it's a lot you poured into it. But when your husband talks about your inspirational side, why does he talk about it like that? Share with us, so they can see that when they see the artwork. That's so kind. I, um, oh, sorry. Um, okay, I don't apologize, girl. Um, we are all connected, and... I know this through lots of life experiences, but I think through the cancer, um, we so we felt vulnerability like we never felt before, right? I mean, there's so we needed other people in a way that I had never experienced, and I think when this crisis came up, I think um, it just. I mean, I hope I'm living that every day, but I think it brought up the truth again that we all are connected and we all need each other. Right. Um, and everybody, the heroes that are out there, really, we wanted to reach out and tell them we see you and um, we are thankful. I, I don't, I, yeah, it's hard for me to voice it, but I, I believe that it's so important that we're kind and that we, we kind is an overused word, I think, and it, it feels like people don't really feel it. And we wanted people to understand that kindness is the way to connecting to each other and to being thankful. And um, I think it, it comes from my parents. I mean, I was brought up that way, but I also believe that when you get vulnerable, it is really the time for truth and really the time to say thank you and, and reach out to people. So. You got it. Michael, I'm not leaving you out, handsome. I'm <laughs> not leaving you out, sweetheart. So, when you were creating this, how did you feel that you were giving back, Michael? Um, that's kind of hard. Um, I felt like we are kind of giving back because, well, because there's so many people out there throughout the whole world who are risking their lives, and us as a family and a lot of other families can't really do anything to help but just to encourage people to keep going and to not stop and to just know that it's all going to work out. Why is it important, hon? From such, how old are you, sweetheart? Uh, I'm 11. 11. And you're a good-looking 11, I'll tell you that, if you don't mind me saying so. But why is it so important? Now, you're talking to the youth, because the show is Future Prospects. Why is it so important for us to keep positive? And I'm going to ask you more on your ideas of what you've applied. But why is it so important, hon? Why? Because sometimes when you go to the negative, um, things start to feel a lot harder than they are. And even though things are really hard right now, when you think of, think of it as positively, you kind of start to get all of the stuff with your family and kind of make those moments matter and that's and hopefully that's what they will remember when people when this um stuff comes up 
or when in a couple of years, like when people are talking about it, we're hoping that they're not going to remember everyone who is sick right now, but the good moments that they had either through FaceTime or just with their families. That's right, handsome. Now, tell, tell the viewers, Peggy, did you want to say something? No, I just can't. All right. Tell the viewers, how did you get, all of a sudden you were doing the artwork, and all of a sudden this chalk arrived. Tell the chalk story. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so we, we had a good amount of chalk at our house, but we kind of used it all up in that big drawing, the first one. So then a couple days later, we get a we get a package from Illinois and we open it up and it's a huge thing of chalk. And we're just like, all right, so we're doing this until this is over. And, <laughs> and probably even after just because that would be fun. But yeah, so we've continued to get chalk and I'm pretty excited that people want us to keep going. And so, yeah. You got it, honey. Now, when you posted it on Facebook, guys, what was the response? It was yeah. amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, our prayer was one person, you know, that when we started, we just said, hey, I hope this affects one person's heart, right? Hopefully. And, and then it, it took off and people loved it. And then they started sharing it. And then all of a sudden we're getting messages from all over. So. Oh, that's awesome. How about you? How about you, Steve? I mean, it, literally, that was our goal, was I, everybody walks around the neighborhood because that's what you can do with the stay at home. You get to walk with your right. family. Yeah. And, you know, I think our original vision was, well, well, we'll have something that everybody in the neighborhood can see, and hopefully they'll be inspired, and they'll love it, and we'll post it on Facebook, and then it just, it just took off, yeah. and which has been great. And like Michael said, just having containers of chalk show up on our doorstep, not knowing who dropped it off, but you know your message is resonating when people just want you to keep going and, and keep coming up with more. So you got that's it. What we're trying to do. You got it. And that's how I found the story with you posting it. Posting it. On that note, we got to go to break. We'll be right back, guys, with the Garno family. Stay tuned. Don't go away, guys. See you soon. Skype with the Gorno family from Michigan, United States of America. Woo, woo, woo. Hey -o, hey -o. All right, guys. Awesome segment one. Now, I want to touch upon the chalk. Are you going to go, oh, my God, the chalk, the chalk, the chalk. But it came all the way from Ohio. So did you know the family? Like, did they introduce themselves? Did they put a letter inside the package? Like, this is pretty cool, guys. And I think that's been the amazing yeah. part of it is that it shows up unannounced. There's no letters. There's no nothing. It's just chalk. But the message is clear. Right. You, we yeah. want you to keep doing this. And so that's that's what we take every time another box shows up on our doorstep or somebody stops by to drop another one off. Okay. We have to, we have to come up with another one. And yeah. And the beautiful part is we've got great inspiration. You know, we, we look to the Lord and the Holy Spirit to provide us with some some great inspiration for messages Amen. that we can bring to people. And, and it's worked so far. You got it, my love. Before we get into the next segment here, before the conversation, the T-shirts. Like, did you guys design this for the show or what's going down here? Like, okay. <laughs> Michael, tell us, my love. Oh, yeah. So... Oh yeah. <laughs> um, when my dad was coaching tennis at Hope College, um, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, and then I think it was once was it once you were 
Um, yeah, it was the colon cancer. And so then we, my dad and I invited a ton of um, my, our friends and family. And we, and my uncle, I think, has, owns a tie-dye shop. So we got to make these and surprise my mom with everyone wearing them. And the pink is for breast cancer and the blue is for colon cancer. And then this is our, this is our motto. He said, make it count. So whatever situation you're in, or whatever's happening, please let's make it, make the best of it, make it count, and and live your life like that. That's really you got it. You guys are doing it already through those wonderful artwork, which our wonderful viewers are going to view at the end of each segment. So the first one that we did was the heart. This one's going to be the cross. All right. Yeah. But before we get into it, they're going to see it. We've explained that. We've touched upon that. But I want to touch upon living through the pandemic. We're mm -hmm. in Canada. We'll deal with it in our own way. You're in the United States. You're dealing with it in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start off with Michael. And I want to ask you, my love, as being a young person, how have you dealt with it realistically from the heart like you shared with me from the pre at the pre-interview, Hanson? Um... I think I've definitely talked a lot about it with my parents because I know a lot of kids right now are probably like me, probably like, oh, I want to see my friends and not just the same people like every day. The but same people? I, yeah, but I would, <laughs> yeah, but I would encourage kids around the world to just, um, to just be able to just talk about it if you're nervous or anything, or if you just want to talk about it just because you should be able to and I think that you should but I've definitely dealt with it just by doing a lot of FaceTimes with my friends and kind of just going outside and just going trying to do my normal day stuff that I would do anyway yes. but clearly without anybody else and then keeping busy doing the chalk art yes yes, yes. And zoom, zoom is one of our new favorite words. Yeah. Who knew? What's that? Zoom meetings. Zoom, okay, all right. Peggy, how have you lived with this, honey? How are you living with this? What can you give back to mothers, women, people? Like, we again, we're dealing with it differently here, but you'll deal with a whole different side over there, and we'll get into that in the third segment. But how do you get through it, my love? what Michael said is the most important we talk about it like we you know we have our feelings about it I think there are days that are you know you see the blessings and the hardest things right I mean um where I can really feel that and feel I think it's our family is more connected we're slower those are the those are the positives if there if there's a silver lining right in all of this but the days where where you hear all the sad stories and you're worried. We have family members on the front line. We have friends. I mean, we cry and we we're real about how hard it is. And I yeah. think, I think for me, that's been, um, you know, it's, that's the best thing we can do for our kids is help them walk through it honestly. And, um, and so it's hard to not see your friends. So we're, we try, try really hard for Michael and for Steve and I to, connect with people through technology, through however we're going to do that. When writing letters to grandparents, um, all those things, right? I think they matter. And, right. and it's really made it clear how much they matter. Uh, you know something? Oh, wow. You said something there, and this is speaking to Michael as well as Steve. And this is something that's really dear in my heart because I've seen a lot of some parents just meeting them or even seeing them or even watching the TV, which I try not to watch too much of the negative stuff. Right. But... We are a role model for our children, are we not? Absolutely. So right. how, how is it that you keep positive for Michael? How important is it for us as parents to be teaching them how to go through stuff, right. like to deal with the challenge, life? Right. Um, you know, I pray, first of all. I think that keeps me grounded. Um, I know it does. I th I stay connected to Steve, obviously, and and to Michael. But I think it's a choice. You know, it's a choice every day to wake up and say we're going to find the good in this, and we're going to think about the people who are struggling, and we're going to 
pray for them and we're going to hold that because we can. And, and then we find fun too. I mean, you have to have laughter. You got to have a balance, right? Yes. So those are all a choice. I mean, I think, um, you, I think the connections really help me like talking to my nieces and who, my friends and family and, um, but yeah, I think it's a choice to, to stay balanced and to be real. And that's right. Honey. That's what we've tried to do, I think. And I think I, one of the one of the conversations we had early on was was where where is God? How do you find God in in the middle of a pandemic, which is there's all kinds of negative news about people getting sick and people dying and and we have to stay at home and we can't hug people and you know all of those things are, are, are negative. So it's hard sometimes to find God. And so we had that conversation as a family about where, where do you see God? And, you know, then you start seeing it in the little things. I mean, chalk showing up at our doorstep I mean, in the mail from yeah. Illinois, that, right. yeah. that's right. God, I mean, that's, you know, sitting yeah. around talking about a design and, and something magically coming to us that's that's God, and then having everybody love what we're doing, and and inspiring some other people to to voice their appreciation, and I mean those are all things that would not have happened that's if right. not right. for this pandemic. We would right. never have done this driveway art. So those are all the amazing things that have come out of it, and we just want to encourage Michael and everyone out there to look for those things because in the midst of the storm, there's always something great that comes out of it. You got it, my love. There was something that you shared with us uh, in the pre-interview, Steve, and you said family, talking to families, including myself, that we've never spoken to in a while. Share with that with the viewers because it's, uh, I want to get emotional here, but you really tugged at the strings with me. And um, sometimes you can have arguments with your own families and you're like, oh, I'll stuff them, cut them off. But this is, share with them what you shared with me because it's not about me, it's about we as a world. Yeah. COVID is taking, you know, it's taking us all. So can you share with the viewers, hon, what it's done for you? Yep, I think you know, as as a professional, you know, and I I had two jobs. I worked at at my my job and as a coach, and sometimes it's so easy to get wrapped up in the busyness and the the next responsibility that you have that you justify not calling. I'll call tomorrow, or I'll I'll catch up later, and this has just really emphasized within me the need to, to reach out more, to call my mom, to call my dad, to send them a text. I mean, the thing I'm doing more now than I've ever done is just sending a text. I, I got to work this morning and I was thinking about my dad and I, I just sent him a text and said, I was thinking about you this morning. So I just wanted you to know I love you. Um, I would never, have, I probably would never have done that before this happened, but it's really taught me how important it is to reach out and how even if it's electronic, even if it's a short text message, it matters. It means something. And you I'm know, going to carry that with me. It's so true because our last guest, Olivia Rose, and this is a hats off to our young people, Michael, we as the mature generation now is learning how to do technology even more handsome. Like, how is it important that we can embrace that through messaging? Um, yeah, through messaging, um, I've learned that it, it, people can take a lot of stuff in a lot of different ways, but I think right now, all, I think all anyone would need to say is like dad said, um, I'm thinking about you or I love you or I hope you have a great day today or anything like that, just cause I'm because I think that that will make people light up and just hopefully make them feel comfortable. Well, well you're doing it right, uh, guys. Sorry. About the letters in the neighborhood. We we have a little neighbor boy, oh, yeah. Joey, who plays with Michael. Oh, yeah. So 
I started, we started um, running down to each other's houses and passing lighters in between. So we were having fun. So we would do like a centimeter, like print out a tiny little thing and put it in a tiny envelope or write something in code or just having fun with it. And that kind of, that's kind of what you really need to do right now and just make sure that you're staying connected with everyone that you love and and all your friends. You got it, honey. How in an, we have to, I'm gonna watch the time here because I wanna get in as much as I can because there's so much to cover in your story. What is the word love meaning to you more so now? Love. Um, I don't Anybody know. Anybody can That's... answer, Anybody. We talked about it. Nope. But now she's we have not going to be able to answer because <laughs> she's here enough. I, I think for for us, yes. you know, hope and love has been part of every single one of the messages, and and we believe it's so important. And and my wife has taught me this, you know, to let people know that you love them and appreciate them. And being locked up in your house. It yes. is, is a time where it's difficult to do that, but we're finding all kinds of ways, new ways to reach out. Like Michael said, mm -hmm. through a letter dropped off in a mailbox five houses down, you can show that person how much you love them. And they can feel it, even though it's just a little piece of paper with a few words on it. Doesn't need to be a deep letter. Anything to let them know you're thinking about them helps them understand how much you care for them. You got it, guys. You got it. We got to go. We're going to come back. we got so much to fill. You guys are amazing. We'll be right back, guys. Future Prospects, Rogers Television. The future prospects with Michigan United States Woo! family. Oh, I love the way you come on. You guys are fired up. Like I love it. It's not like oh hello. It's woo. Let's see the face. Let's see That's the face. Right. Come on. All right, honey. We covered a lot, but I want to get down to some really heartfelt now because it's a reality check. COVID is really slapping us in the face. We can use it as a negative or we can use it as a positive. And I'm gonna use it as a positive because I'm gonna to go to the heart now. So we're in Canada, we deal with our curve, we deal with our numbers. But funny, before this show, before we filmed, and I shared this with Mike, uh, Steve real fast, is that I was watching the news and you had on the governor, and correct me if I'm wrong, Governor Whitmer, am yep. I saying that right? That's correct. She was coming on because she's dealing with a lot of issues down in Michigan. You're the third state in the United States that has the most right. issues with COVID. And I'm looking at my paper and I'm looking at her and I'm going, are you kidding me? I'm putting a beautiful family on television from Michigan and there she was. So that wasn't a coincidence. That was a reason. So God, I'm gonna say his name, put me in the right place at the right time. So there's a lot of stuff going on down there. And from Michael, from Steve, you shared with me something, doing your own, working from home, talking to your staff. What is it that you shared, the frustration that you're dealing down in Michigan, that we here in the United States can really honestly respect what you know what I mean? Like work together. What message can you send? Well, I, I, I've been telling everybody at work. So we're we're back at work. We are physically back in in the workplace and we've done a lot of things to to protect everybody. Temperature checks when you come into work. We give out masks to help protect the spread. We clean up workstations. So we've established all of these great 
processes to keep everybody safe. And my frustration came out the other day, just I saw a lot of people not wearing their masks while they were talking on the phone, while they were at their desk. And I, I with two people that have probably high risk, my son has asthma, Peggy obviously is a two-time cancer survivor. I take it very seriously because I don't want to bring this home with me. And so I, I wrote an email to, to my staff and to, uh, to the others in the office, just encouraging them to, to wear their mask, that it only works if you wear it all the time. And um, it was well received. It was it was followed up by by our plant manager, and and I, I just felt like it was important for me to speak up and and early on set the tone and say we're all setting an example. We need to do this, and we're in it together. But it only works if every single one of us participates and does it the right way. That's right, hon. How about you, Peggy? Because I watched it, I seen it, and I thought again, as I've said to all my said to Ron, my producer, and the team that I have at Rogers, we don't live in a community, we live in a world. And right. COVID is teaching us that now. So yeah. what's your views on that, hon? Huh? Because God bless that governor. She's got, she's gutsy. She really yeah, is. She is. She is gutsy, yeah. You know, I think it, I think to something I said earlier, I think it just reminds us we're all connected. And we're, I mean, it's not, we, you live in Canada, we live in the United States, but this pandemic, is this this virus is is everywhere? It doesn't it doesn't discrim it doesn't say oh this person not that person. So we need to do everything we can do for other people. Even if you don't even if you don't think you have it or whatever is happening in your heart, think of the person next to you. You know, right. it's that that whole thing that that Steve is saying and be an example for everyone else um, to care about each other. And that's. I think that's the biggest takeaway. I think we're all, again, we're all vulnerable. We're all vulnerable together. And I hope it connects us all. I hope it does. One of, you had said earlier, one of the um, first emails I got was from Italy. A nurse in Italy saw our, some of our artwork and was so, showed it to her, her staff. And I think it just, it just struck me then how much everyone is going through the same experience and whatever we can do to protect each other, the gut and all the governors, God bless them, all the mayors, all the people who are trying, all the people who are trying to help make decisions for us. Um, we just, you know, we're in it together and we need to honor that, I think. Um, right. And I hope too, I hope it brings out this incredible connection that, um, that we remember that we're all connected. You know something, hon? It's already doing that, because you're doing it right now. Oh, you're doing you. it right now, through your artwork and through the show, because not only had it read Italy and other places, it hit me. It literally mm. taught me of what I can do with the platform that God has given me. So, beautifully said, guys. Michael, I don't know if you watch TV or not, but when you see that, does your friends from youth now, because it's a youth platform now, okay? Talk from your heart. When you, do you see anybody that doesn't wear their mask or young people who have questions or don't listen? What is your view to give back to youth now? This is your platform, my friend. Um, yeah, I don't think I've really seen any kids or any, like, I mean, like, little kids don't really have a, lot, a ton of masks that fit them. But kids around my age, I usually see people are wearing masks. But I kind of get a little bit frustrated because um, I'm doing online school. And one of the main toxic top topics that people are doing is like, this sucks. I want to go back to school. And I just want to yell, stop. Because like they're making this a lot harder for a ton of people than it really is. And um, my dad said something about this, but in a different situation, but like, it's kind of like a balance beam. Once you go too far to one side, it gets it and you put more things on that side, it gets harder and harder to go back to the other. 
That's right, honey. How does it, I want you to, it's okay to get mad because your mad is relevant. It's when a selfish mad is when they're just mad because they have to sit down and watch a couple of game shows for a while or TV. But <laughs> you know what I mean? But you, yep. as a young person, handsome, who have two incredible parents beside you, why does it get you mad, honey? Like, when it gets you mad, why? Why does it get you mad? Talk to the youth because they need to hear this here in Canada as well as all over. Mm -hmm. I think it gets me mad just because I just want people, like like we said earlier, I just want people to just see the positive and not just be all negative about it and to just try and um i'm just trying to think like just be like god just try and give other people reassurance that everything's gonna be fine and not to just be like i'm just gonna say everything that i want to say when it's already publicized to the whole class or the whole country you got it how do you keep yourself positive um Probably my parents, they, <laughs> they help a lot. Like, I'll be, like, let's say I'm just like, I today was a rough day for me. I just want to go out and see my friends. They really help with that. Like, they'll just say, um, they'll just say, like, let's go play some cards. Or once I'm done, just try to, like, get off of that note into a good one. Into, let's just watch a movie tonight. Or let's go play cards or let's have hamburgers or whatever it is. Just yes. Be, yeah, just to have it be fun after that. Yeah, honey. Everything you're saying is what youth need to because I, ever since this pandemic has happened, I have no word of a lie. I talk the truth. I have been having so many phone calls of young people wanting to talk and come on the show because now they're trying to, they want to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. when you look at this, guys, on a whole, what is it that it's teaching you? Steve, what is it that COVID is teaching you? Because I think it's awakening. I think it's awakening for the world. I've never seen so many leaders, in a way, step up from their normal uh, attitude. They're speaking up now with more of a voice. Even here in Canada, our own Prime Minister, um, our Premier Doug Trudeau, there's a different platform here. They're, they're leading. They're leading. It's not, it's a way that it's so good. So what is it that you've seen that it's helped yourselves? Well, I think from, from my perspective, it just, it's taught you to look at the world through a different lens and see people differently. I mean, I will never see doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists ever the same way again. We, we right. think about what they have seen with their eyes. We get stories of it. They have experienced it in their hearts and really appreciating those people, the first responders, you you think about it and you say they risk life and limb when they when they go in but but this has been a different level of that that's right and that's even right. the cashier at the grocery store and you would never think that a store stocker at target would be considered heroic or courageous by showing up to work every day but they are yes. and it's taught us i think just to appreciate everybody for their their contribution and what they're doing to help all of us. The, the person stocking the shelves, the person cleaning the surgery room is equally as important as the doctor doing the surgery. And I, I hope that we all carry this forward and continue to keep that lens right in front of us after we get beyond COVID. You got it, hon. I want to touch, before we go to break, we've only got to maybe around 30, uh, 30 minutes here. Um, Peggy, you touched your throat yeah. when he says the hospital rooms. Yeah. Why did you do that? Everybody matters. You know, I'm so thankful to all of the people, everyone named and anyone we didn't name in our artwork. I mean, the, you know, they're doing everything they can to 
save people, to help people, everyone. And because there's not, it's not just the hospitals. That is incredible. I mean, unbelievable that what they're doing. But everybody is help. Everybody is helping to save lives by showing up. It matters. Or by staying home. Or, or by staying home. Right. Stay home. Yeah. On yeah. that note, that note, sweetheart, we got to go to break. We'll be right back, guys. Okay. Love you guys. We'll be right back. Okay. from Michigan, United States. Hey! So we uh, went to break. We are having a little chit chat off camera viewers. And Michael, what did you say to me? You pat your face like this. And you said, what did you share? What did you say? Um, I said that doing this is kind of like, and even with people doing online school, but it's just kind of like a mental workout, trying to think of like good examples for like what, what to say to what either I said or either one of my parents did, like, it's just kind of hard because you, once you, you're like on here, you realize, oh, wait, we actually did do a ton of fun stuff over this time. So, right. That's all good. How's been, I want to touch upon this for one minute, Michael. How was on, uh, online school been? Not having your teachers in front of you. What's that been like? It's been really fun. I think. Like, um, at least it was fun for the first couple of weeks. But okay. um, now um, everyone is just kind of ready to be done and just being able to probably just go outside with a brother or sister or a parent or even out by themselves just so then they've got all the time that they need. But I think for me, it's been getting a little bit annoying to be seeing the exact same screen, like, I'm just going to give an example, it would probably be, it's like Monday, but, um, Monday, math and Bible day, but, um, <laughs> so, yeah, but I think it's, it's a great way to keep kids connected, because we're doing Zoom meetings, and we're doing, like, with our class, and we're doing, like, crazy hair days, and stuff <laughs> like that, so we're just trying to, like, live it up as much as we can. All right. Awesome. I'm going to ask you this. I'm watching the clock because I want to touch upon something that's very dear to all of our hearts. Are you ready for this to be going into the fall, Michael, with the school? Are you ready for it, hon? No. Um, honestly, honestly? Online school? Um, no, because we um, were at... So, I'm in fifth grade, and um, so next year, so they're um, moving sixth grade to the middle school because it was still in elementary. Right. But now everyone's kind of nervous that they might not be finished building. So, like, everyone, so, like, in, like, the chat rooms or in Zoom, everyone's just like, ah, oh, like, fingers <laughs> crossed. Uh, oh. Oh, hi. It's going to be good. It's going to be yeah. good. Yeah. So, we got, I don't want to lose this because we've only got 12 minutes. So, sweethearts, share with us who is the champion behind your faith and gets you through life. And I know who he is, but I want you to tell the viewers because some viewers can relate and there's a lot of them that cannot. But they'll find him. Go for it. Anybody? Wow. That's a big question. It's a big question. It is. Peggy. Well, we 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 believe strongly in the Lord and and in Him helping to guide our lives, uh, provide us strength. We obviously see the importance. We're sending Michael to a Christian school, and we love the fact that he's getting that as part of his education. 
Um, so we just we just believe in in the power of God and and that He fills us up and and gives us the strength and also the inspiration to do things like this. You know, we we couldn't do what we did on the driveway without that thought being present in our heads. And we don't believe it's an accident. We don't believe it was by chance that we met you and these things are happening for a reason. And we're hoping that that great things come out of it. It will. It will, honey. Peggy, your side, sweetheart. What does he mean to you, Peggy? What does he mean to you? Let it flow, girl, because I'm going to let mine flow. <laughs> you know, I think I think the Holy Spirit has always been my, you know, in the Trinity, what what resides in, in my daily life. And those nudgings, those um, those feelings you have to connect, all of that I believe to be the Holy Spirit. And I think that's what drives us. And I think prayer gets me there. I think um you know, being like Jesus is means kindness, right? It means kindness. It means loving. It means caring. It means all the things we've talked about. And that's what we're trying to represent and, and be, right? It's, it's not even a representation. It's just be that. Be the good in the world really comes from our faith. Really, really. Peggy has taught me to look for these things. I considered myself spiritual. I probably wasn't religious. She has taught me to look for these things. One of the stories that I can't ever unforget, or I, I won't ever be able to unsee, is in the middle of downtown Houston, we go to MD Anderson for her colon cancer treatments and to see her oncologist. In the middle of this concrete jungle, on the day that we got the news that she was cancer-free, there is no green anywhere to be seen. And we pull up at a stoplight and a dragonfly flies in front of our windshield and hovers for about five seconds and then flies off. And Peggy says, that was my mom. Yeah. And I would have never, I would have just looked at that and said, wow, what is that dragonfly doing? But she has taught me to look for these things and I believe they are not coincidence. Now, because I have met her and because she's opened my eyes to these things. Wow. Oh, my God. Woo! These are stories that are going to just, oh, my God, open up the soul. Michael, how important, how important is Jesus' to you, hon? He's really important, especially that I'm learning about it in school and learning a lot more and a lot deeper into what he really did for us. And... I think a good example would be, I remember one night on the first couple of weeks of pandemic, like I think when we were all starting to really get sick of it, I remember talking about and talking about some sort of um, fun thing to do that night. And then I remember my mom saying, kind of out of the blue, what lesson is God trying to teach us here? And I think definitely one of them is that now, right now, we're realizing at a whole different level that friends and family really are everything. And, yeah, so it's kind of hard to get through life without seeing them in person. Because, I mean, it's great to see people on screens, but in person is a whole different thing. What I've realized with me, honey, and that's so true, is that it's taught me to look at him and not everything else around to focus right. on right. him. Yeah. 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 Focus on him, not to yeah. worry about all the stuff. He will do that stuff. Just ask him for everything. Share right. yourself, guys. Do you find that with yourselves? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All those material things, they don't, you know, whatever all that is, that's not the most important thing. The people, your faith, look to God first, and your the people that are around you, that's what matters. Yeah. That's right. Michael, you can, uh, Michael, Steve, you can jump in. How about yourself, hon? What has it taught you, Steve? Oh. Well, I, like I say, just really to be appreciative of, of everyone around you and, and the things, the little things that they do each day to make your life better. Um, I, I think that's, that's, where I, that's where I see God every day in my life is those little decisions that people make 
for us. And I've, I've come to appreciate it so much more during this time. Have you ever had somebody come to you guys through this and they don't know if they can get through? They're like so scared. They don't know. We know that the Lord's in control, but they don't have a relationship with him. So they're like, I don't know, because they're looking to the neighbor, they're looking for this, they're looking for that, but they don't have that inner peace. Have you encountered that at all with anybody? Yes. Yep. Um, I think, and then I, you know, you, that's an opportunity to share your faith and to share what, what is holding me or Michael or Steve. And, um, and I think that what, what an incredible opportunity, <laughs> what an incredible time when someone is so vulnerable and looking for peace to share the story of Jesus, the share, to share the, the, what you know about that in your life what is keeping you calm? You know, when you have it in this kind of situation where we're all vulnerable, it's a different telling. I mean, you're yes, coming yes. from such a vulnerable place too, that there's this incredible connection, I think. And I, I found it to be um, life-giving to me and hopefully to them. But um, I also lean on my friends and family. You know, we all are having vulnerable moments. And I think telling someone who doesn't understand the story of Jesus or the Bible, that I think that helps them to know that we're we're all feeling that way. You know, you got it, honey. Now we're coming down to the last minute and a half of the show, superhero, which the viewers are gonna see. I so, what is your message to superheroes? And when you break away, and we'll see you again, it's gonna show. Why did you draw that beautiful picture? What's your uh -huh. message? Well, we, th we thought long and hard about that one. That was the most difficult one to come up with. <laughs> but we, we were just so, I think, inspired to, to recognize all the people that haven't been recognized. We were trying to figure out who do we need to get to. And we just thought there are so many more people other than doctors, nurses, first responders. Try and, and we just wanted to touch as as many of those people and Peggy was the inspiration behind we see you you know that was a huge part of the message to say we see you we recognize that you are equally as heroic as those doctors and nurses on the front line they're doing amazing things but so are you and we want you to know how much we appreciate it awesome we got a couple of seconds real fast what do you want to say to the viewers real fast here in Canada we just love the fact that we're we're able to to get through to an audience in Canada. Yeah. Hello from Michigan. Yeah. Hey. We are all in this together, and we love you, we love and you. we look forward to seeing you on the other side of this. You got it, honey. And on that note, love you, the Garno family. We'll see love you Love you, too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye.